So thinking back to the main purpose of this section, we are interested in solving systems of equations. If you just apply row operations randomly, you're going to have a lot of trouble because you're going to end up having a complex puzzle of how do you get your matrix the way you want it to look when you're trying to solve these equations. So what we're going to use is something called Gauss-Jordan elimination. And this is an algorithm, a step-by-step -step process to get our matrix into the form that will give us the answer. So I'm giving you an overview here, but this isn't exactly Gauss-Jordan because we'll see in the next section that you can't always get a 1 in the 2, 2 position, for instance. You have to adjust a little bit. But this gives you an idea of the perfect situation, how Gauss-Jordan elimination will work. What you do is you get a 1 in a strategic place, and then you use that 1 to get rid of everything below it, everything in the column. What you're basically doing is eliminating variables. And then you do it in the next position you can, and again, this is strategically chosen. In the perfect case, you'll be able to do this on the diagonal. So now think about what you have. You've eliminated uh, variables, and you finally, hopefully, can end up with something like this. Although, again, not always. But the goal is to eventually end up with something like this. In the 3 by 3 case, in other words, in three equations, uh, three unknowns. And if we augment it, you want something like this. Now, again, this will not always be possible to perfectly look like that. We'll have to talk about that in the next section. But if a system has a one unique solution, you'll be able to do this. And think about what this is saying. Each column represents a variable. So these, this is like your x1s, your x2s, your x3s. So this first equation now says x1, no x2, no x3, equals 1. So x1 equals 1. There's no x1, but there's x2 with a coefficient of 1. So x2, no x3, equals 2. So if I can do this, I can simply read the solution off. But the question is, how do you get to here? And like I said, if you just do this randomly, it could take you forever. So we're going to follow this process. So I'll show you a couple of examples of doing that and applying this to a system that has a solution. So we'll start out with a really simple uh, two equation, two unknown case. That, uh, this is an augmented matrix. So you can put the line here if you want to. We won't necessarily carry that as we do operations, but we'll remember it at the end. Now I put down here as a follow-up, but we'll look at it first. What's the original system? I didn't give you the variables, so usually you assume they're going to be at x1, x2. So the first equation will be 3x1 plus 4x2 equals 1, and x1 minus 2x2 equals 7. So I just read across. Remember, each row represents an equation. So Gauss-Jordan says the first place you want to have a 1 is here. We don't have a 1 there, but we have a 1 down here. So I'm thinking, as my first uh, operation, I'm going to switch these two rows. That'll get a 1 where I need it. So I get 1 minus 2, 7, and then I get 3, 4, 1. The other option is to multiply. You should only multiply or switch rows to get that 1. If I was to multiply, I'd multiply by 1 third. But then that would introduce fractions here and here. Not that we can't handle fractions, but that's an unnecessary complication. Okay, Gauss-Jordan says once you have this 1 here, you want everything below it to be 0. So I want this 3 to be a 0. I want to use that 1 to make that happen. Well, if I multiply negative 3 times 1 and add it to 3, I get 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say minus 3, row 1. So I'm adding negative 3, row 1 to row 2. Okay, let's see what that looks like when I do that. Remember, row 1 stays the same. You're adding that you're doing this in your head. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3, and 3 is 0. Corresponding entries. Minus 3 times minus 2, because remember I'm using row 1. It's positive 6, and 4 gives me 10. Okay, and negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Negative 21 plus 1 is negative 20. Okay, so yeah, notice what I did. I took this negative 3, I'd multiply it times each of the entries here, and add it correspondingly to row 2. And that got rid of that. That was my goal, because now, no matter what I do, I can't mess up this 1 by adding back and forth. Next goal, you go on the diagonal, you would like this to be a 1. Remember, multiplication or switching around, here multiplication will work. There's nothing to switch, so you have to multiply. Luckily, it works out nice because everything's divisible by 10. So if I multiply by 1 tenth, I can get a 1 there. So I say, okay, I got 1 minus 2, 7. And I got 0, 1, minus 2. Okay, at this stage, I'm almost done. This equation tells me that x2 equals negative 2. The problem is, I don't know what x1 is because of this. 
So now I want to use this one. Everything above and below your one that you make, your pivot, everything above and below that should be zero. So you want this negative two to be zero. And you want to use this one to get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two because that's a negative two and I'm going to use row two because that's where my one is. Okay, and so now I have one, zero. That's what I want to have happen, right? Because two times zero is zero. Add it here, I keep my one. That's the whole point of that zero. Two times one is positive two. Add it to negative two, I get zero. And two times negative two, okay, that's negative four. And seven gives me three. Okay, so now I'm going to put the augment back because it's going to be useful here. Now I have this exactly how I want it. If I read across, it tells me x1 equals 3 and x2 equals negative 2. So I could write this like this, or as before, even though it's not xy, you could write 3 comma minus 2, and that would be okay as well. So again, notice what this did. It gave me a very organized way to solve this system. The only risk is uh, minor arithmetic errors, but as long as I write down what I did, if I have a mistake, I can always catch it very easily. So let's look at uh, one more complicated case, a three uh, equation, three unknown situation. We're starting out with our system of equations. And so what I want to do first is write this as an augmented matrix. And so we'll use gauss jordan elimination for this. It is very probable that on an exam, I would ask you to use a particular method because I want you comfortable with all of them. And then minus three. So all I'm doing is copying over and I'm making sure no variables are missing as we go. All right, so here's my system of equations written as an augmented matrix. So if that's the case, then now I'm gonna start applying my Gauss-Jordan elimination. So it says I want a one here. Okay, well, luckily we already have a one there, so I don't have to do anything. Now we use that one to get rid of anything above and below it. So I want uh, the two here, and I want this three here to be zero. So I'm gonna use that one to make that happen. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, this is a positive two, so I'm gonna use a negative two times that one. That one is in row one. This is a negative three, so I'm going to use a positive three. And I'm going to use that one in row one. Okay, if I do that, this is going to be two steps because I'm using, I'm doing two uh, rows at once. One, one, two, twelve. So that stays the same. Okay, so go through this very carefully. Minus two times one is negative two plus two is zero. Okay, that's what you want to want to have happen. Minus two times one is minus two plus three gives me one. Minus 2 times 2 gives me minus 4, and minus 1 is minus 5, and then minus 2 times 12 is minus 24, and minus 2 is minus 26. Okay, now positive 3. Okay, so remember, we're multiplying everything in row 1 by 3, and then we're adding it to row 3. Plus 3 times 1 is 3, and minus 3 is 0. That's what we want. 3 times 1, the second one. 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 gives me 7. 3 times 2 is 6, and 1 also gives me 7. And 3 times 12 is 36. 36 and negative 8 gives me 28. Okay, so that was the first batch, and this is what you want. You want to have that 1, and then everything above and below zeros. Then you go on the diagonal and you look at the next entry. You want this to be a 1. It already is. It's our lucky day. So now you're going to use that 1 to get rid of anything above and below it. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this 1 above it. So I'm going to use a negative 1 times row 2 because that's where the 1 is. That's the same as subtracting row 2. And then I want to get rid of the 7. So I'm going to say minus 7 times row 2. Now something I could have done to simplify this is multiply by 1 7 here. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to stick to the steps, but that certainly would have uh, helped in this stage. Okay, so let's look at what happens when I subtract row 2. 1 minus 0, 1. 1 minus 1, 0. Okay, now i got to be careful because of all the negatives. So it's 2 minus a negative 5. That's 2 plus 5. That's 7. And it's 12 minus a negative 26. That's 12 plus 26. So that's 38. Say it twice in your head if you have to, whatever you want to do. Just try to avoid those little mistakes that can add up quickly as you go. Okay, so now I got the second row didn't change. Now this uh, last row, 
negative 7, remember I'm using row 2 now, so negative 7 times 0 is 0, add it to 0, it's 0. That's always going to happen, that's what I want to have happen. Minus 7 times 1 is minus 7, and 7 is 0. Same idea. Okay, minus 7 times minus 5 is 35. 35 and 7 is 42. Okay, now I got to be a little more careful because these are bigger numbers. So I'm actually getting my calculator and I say, okay, minus 7 times minus 26. Minus 7 times minus 26 is 182. 182 plus 28. I get 210. Okay. Now, you might be able to do that in your head. I might be able to do that in my head, but I don't see the point of risking that as far as having a minor mistake there. All right, we're almost done, because remember what we want is we want this, this diagonal to be 1s, and so we need this 42 to be a 1. Well, our only choice is to multiply by 1 over 42. So now I, I write down everything again, except for that last row is going to change. So I got 1, 0, 7, 38, and 0, 1, minus 5, minus 26, and then finally 0, 0. Okay, 42 times 1 over 42 is 1. And the question is, what's 210 over 42? So I check my calculator, and it actually is 5, so it actually comes out pretty nice. In other words, uh, I didn't have to deal with a crazy decimal. Not that you won't sometimes have to deal with those, but it's nice when we can avoid them. Okay, so I got my 1 here, and as before, now you want everything above that 1 to be 0. So I need to add 5 times, the 1 is in row 3, so row 3, and subtract 7 times row 3. Okay, so now I say, well, because of these two zeros, these entries aren't going to change. So that's a 1 and a 0. So I can focus on the rest of it. Minus 7 times 1 is 7, or negative 7, and 7 is 0. Minus 7 times 5 is minus 35, plus 38 is 3. Okay, now what about this 5? Now, the 0, 1 here won't change because we're multiplying by zeros down here. So this is still 0, 1. It's the whole point of those zeros. 5 times 1 is 5, and minus 5 is 0. And 5 times 5 is 25, and minus 26 is minus 1. And then finally, we still have this row done, 0, 0, 1, 5. So I get my answer, reading straight off of this. Remember where my augment is. This is not your final answer. That's not okay as a final answer. You've got to actually solve the system. So the answer would be 3, minus 1, comma 5. This is my final answer. So you would get the exact same answer if you went ahead and did this algebraically. And perhaps that's easier in this case. But the main thing we're going to see is that that is not always easier. In other words, in some cases, this is going to be a, a superior method. In others, it might be a little more tedious. We'll also see in another video how we can do this on the calculator, although I want to stress that you should still know how to do it by hand.